Ladies and gentlemen, the RTX 4070's official performance figures have leaked online. We also have the release date, pricing, and other aspects of the card all been laid bare. And we're also going to focus a lot on Intel's 13th, 14th generation processors and answering what is actually the plan from Intel regarding Raptor Lake refresh, Meteor Lake. There's been an awful lot of confusion whether Meteor Lake is even going to see a desktop launch. And we're going to get into all of this after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. To give you the quick headline, the 4070 is going to be $599 US for its MSRP and will be available on the 13th of April. So just a couple of days from now and we should see these on store shelves. Nvidia are targeting this card as being capable of 1440p at over 100 frames a second with ray tracing as well as DLSS3. Let's start things out with the quick headline of how it compares against the 3080, 3070 Ti and the 3070. Well, basically it is on par with the 3080 when frame generation is not used. However, of course, with frame generation on, well, things get a little different. Um, against the 3070 Ti as well as the 3070, obviously there is a significantly larger gap in performance. But again, this card is $599, US so it's a small uptick, roughly 20% over the 3070 Ti. But of course, the 4070 does have that additional RAM, which is probably going to come in handy. And what will also give it um, somewhat of a, a small benefit over the 3080 10GB. There is also another slide that video cards have leaked as well, and this pits it against the 3070 Ti, as well as the 2070 Super, with and without frame generation again. I don't really have a whole bunch of stuff to say here. Um, you can see that the configuration they are using is the i9-12900K, 1440p max settings with DLSS and RT in games which support it. Therefore, I'm assuming Far Cry does not use something like FSR. Perhaps I'm wrong. So basically, if, for example, we look at a title such as uh, Witcher 3, obviously in the frame generation graph, it is running with ray tracing enabled as well as DLSS. I think that's pretty clear. Um, and of course, in those instances, the 2070 Super gets absolutely demolished and spanked, which is not really surprising. Um, whereas, obviously, the 3070 Ti in games which do not support frame generation, for example, Borderlands 3, it's a much closer race. I don't have a huge amount more to say about the 4070. I think it's a fine looking card. Honestly, I think it's decent. If you want Nvidia for whatever reason, it, they say it benefits the workflow you've got or you're just more comfortable with it or you prefer the drivers, whatever. And you want to jump into a card which is gonna be targeting 1440p for 599 US dollars, it's reasonable. I just wish it was a bit cheaper. I still wish that this card was 499 US dollars. However, I can wish it, I can cross my fingers and it's still not gonna happen. So it is the price it is. Um, I'm also trying to find out a bit more information regarding N32 at the moment. Honestly, I've had two sources who are really good. They're both conflicting one another on the N32 information. So I'm, a little hesitant to say anything at the moment because i'm trying to get a bit of clarification speaking of clarification let's go into raptor lake and a bunch of stuff for intel's processors shall we because there is a couple of news stories jumping around but it all stems from a tweet from momomo and i'm not going to read out the entire image because well you can see it yourself but it does seem to reference meteor lake is coming out for um for desktop as well just it's coming out but some people are wondering whether this means Meteor Lake is coming out for desktop. It also does not specify Raptor Lake Refresh. So does that mean Raptor Lake Refresh is part of the 13th generation? And so on and so on. 
So what I was told by a source, and honestly, when it comes to a Meteor Lake, there has been an awful lot of changes with Intel's um, lineup. For example, Arrow Lake had the number of energy efficient cores literally halved, so from 32 down to 16. Um, the reason this happened from what I'm hearing is because of platform compatibility reasons, and the reason that that happened will become clear in just a moment. So for the 14th generation, I'm told the following. Raps Lake refresh is going to happen. The reason it's not listed is because basically Intel haven't publicly announced it, so it's just not listed well on the support list. Raptor Lake Refresh as well as Meteor Lake are coming out for the laptop for the 14th generation. So what does that mean? Well, as an example, the 14900 part, just for example, could be Meteor Lake, the 14700 could, for example, be Raptor Lake based. I don't have a part list of which one is which, unfortunately, at the moment, and that is just an example, so it could be entirely different from that. However, Meteor Lake is coming to the desktop. Now, I've actually heard a lot of conflicting information. Someone told me that it is coming out, but it's going to be for all-in-ones, probably not for enthusiasts. Others have told me, though, it is coming out. But the latest info that I've been given is the following. Meteor Lake, for the 15th generation, is going to launch. However, it is going to be for the lower end. It's going to be the i3 and i5. The i7s and i9s will be Arrow Lake. So again, i3 and i5 Meteor Lake for the 15th generation. i7 and i9 will be Arrow Lake. Um, so, of course, there are disparities in a few areas here. The first disparity is that there are core count differences, but that's fine because, of course, again, i5s and i9s, for example, have a different core count anyway, so who gives a rat's ass there? However, there are also IPC differences. Um, just in terms of the architecture, it's, it's a different architecture. I can't really call out Intel here, however, because AMD are doing the same thing with their stuff. Um, so, okay, let me rephrase. Let me try that again. Let me say that with uh, proper context. I cannot call out Intel specifically because, again, AMD are doing the same thing with its APUs. So, yeah, I don't like how companies are doing that. However, it is what it is. So Arrow Lake, just to repeat what I mentioned earlier, has had its core counts reduced. The energy efficient cores are um, half. I've spoken about Arrow Lake a couple of times before though, uh, and if I remember, I'll have a slide plonked on what I was told about the core counts. So Meteor Lake, however, now is, to my understanding anyway, six plus eight. The previous information is it was six plus 16 from Meteor Lake S, but it is now just six plus eight. So that's why it is not going to see a launch against Raptor Lake because it would just get murdered. Because yeah, even if hypothetically, let's even hypothetically say that it had a 300, 500 megahertz clock frequency advantage, hypothetically, and even if hypothetically it had a 20% IPC gain, again, this is hypothetical, a six plus, um, six plus eight configuration against Raptor Lake, it would still get, you know, spanked. Um, against like the 13900k in multi-thread anyway it'd probably win in games but that's not really it, it just wouldn't make any logical sense so they're basically holding it back for a generation but meteor lake will launch on laptop that's pretty much the gist of it anyway um i think that's just about it for this particular video though hopefully you have enjoyed it sorry for not being on camera for this one i'm actually well honestly doing shelving stuff um Working on the office, it's been not finished for a while, so shelving stuff is being put up where I can put, well, hardware, that's going to be out of camera shot. Uh, there will also be some other changes in the background. Obviously, this is not the final look of the office. For those who have been more recent to the channel, it only moved into this property, for, you know, not too long ago. So there's some, quite a lot of changes that are still going on. Um, yeah, so... Normal, uh, normal service should hopefully resume tomorrow or the day after, and um, I will also be doing kind of an office tour, maybe when we're a bit further, uh, let's say, settled. With that said, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.